The fine buildings of the Benedictine Monastery of Melk majestically rise up from a plateau above this fascinating town on the River Danube. The elegant yellow buildings of the monastery have become well known far beyond Austria. Not surprising when considering the splendid architecture. Up until the 11th century, a castle belonging to the Barbenbergers was located here, in which its noble occupants secured a number of important and valuable religious treasures. When the fortunes of the noblemen began to increase, they decided to move east. Thus, the region's Benedictine monks replaced the castle with a monastery. Toward the end of the 13th century, a devastating fire destroyed large parts of Melk Monastery and thus for several years restricted the normal life of the monastery. The fate of the fraternity was indelibly linked to the small town of Melk and its 5,000 inhabitants who lived below the monastery. The town is overlooked by this great monastery that is mentioned in the famous novel by Umberto Eco, The Name of the Rose. With a history that dates back more than 250 years, Melk's beautiful park extends over three levels. The facade of the prelate's courtyard is relatively plain, but this area of the monastery exudes a tranquil grandeur. This fountain was not originally destined for the monastery's courtyard. It was brought here from the Waldhausen Monastery. The Emperor's staircase leads to a worldly section of the Benedictine Monastery that was created solely for the Emperor's family. A museum is now located within the Emperor's former private rooms. It provides a fascinating insight into the history of the monastery. The effects of the terrible fire of 1297 were apparent well into the 15th century. In the subsequent Council of Constance that brought about large-scale reforms, Melk Monastery became a significant spiritual and religious centre. The church's treasures and the magnificent rooms of the fully restored and extended monastery are exceptionally beautiful. Its unique library that contains around 100,000 books is one of Melk's most outstanding features. In 
In 1997, a sensational find attracted much attention when fragments of text from a copy of the legendary Nibelung saga were discovered here. The library is particularly impressive due to its Baroque design and a ceiling fresco created by Paul Troger. The monastery's 1800 manuscripts are extremely valuable. Even though many treasures were destroyed by the fire, the oldest texts date back to the early 9th century. A spiral stone staircase leads down into Milk's large Gothic church. The 18th century marked the beginning of extensive construction work in the monastery. The new structure transformed the church into an enchanting example of Baroque design. The exquisite design of the church's splendid interior was mostly the work of the Italian architect Antonio Beruzzi. In 1736, after almost 34 years in construction, the Benedictine Monastery of Milk possessed one of the most impressive Baroque churches in the world. Prominent artists and architects from several European countries, including many talented Austrian artists, were involved in this ambitious project. The monastery's park conceals some more of Milk's architectural gems. A large number of fountains and a variety of exotic flowers attract many visitors to the park. The pavilion, built by Franz Mungenast in 1750, was built as a recreational area for the Benedictines and today contains an atmospheric restaurant. The interior of the pavilion is decorated with magnificent frescoes created by Johann Wenzel Berkel. But it is the remarkable architecture of the central Baroque buildings that have given Melk its reputation as being an icon of Occidental monastery culture. <laughs> 